and in joining our webinar today, which is our first one. So we just thought about, uh, Aya, thank you Renato for your message, you can hear us, that's great. Um, we just thought about in these difficult times, um, we're going to try something um, new, th something fresh. Um, although there are some webinars going around the globe already, um, we thought about taking you on a little journey and for the next 30 minutes um, to Italy, to Apulia, which is a region that um, might not be that famous. So we thought about that could be interesting for you. And um, yeah, so we are happy that you joined us. And in the name of STR Promise, um, I can say that we are really happy to work with Espresso Experience now um, for two years. So Espresso Experience is one of our latest DMCs to say in our portfolio. Um, and, but Italy itself, is, it's, it's just an exciting country and it is so diverse. So um, yeah, but Espresso Experience is a, is a great partner which is on board with STR Promise. Um, we have several locations to show you and to operate, but Elisa will tell you a little bit more about Espresso Experience. And so thank you very much, Elisa, for your efforts and for your time and for creating this lovely webinar and the journey. And I hope you have all prepared yourself with uh, Italian espresso to enjoy the next trip uh, to Italy. Fasten your seatbelts. Uh, thank you for flying with us. And now enjoy, relax. And whenever you have questions, please write them down, take notes, because at the end of the webinar, we're gonna um, give you the opportunity to ask questions related to espresso experience to Italy, to Apulia. And whenever you have more questions, please feel free to send us an email, you have our contact details and we are more than happy to assist you. But now, relax, have fun and enjoy Apulia. So thanks a lot, Normal, for the lovely introduction and welcome everybody once again to our, to our, um, to the first webinar um, to discover Italy as, um, as a destination. Um, just a few technical info, um, the, we will record the meeting so that we will be able to share it uh, with you guys or so later in case you need it. And, uh, you know, for the time being, we just ask you if you could uh, mute, if you could put your setting on mute so that we don't have any background noise that is gonna um, disturb the, the meeting. But uh, let me, I will just share my screen at the moment now with you so that we can start off. So just, uh, um, just to give you like a few words about uh, myself and the Espresso experience. I, uh, my name is Elisa and I work as a senior project manager within, uh, within the, te the team of Espresso. And uh, together with my colleague Jenny, we are the main contacts for um, the German markets. Um, Espresso experience is part of a well-established Italian company that has been in the mice market since 1992. Uh, we have offices uh, in uh, Milan and in Rome, but we do have um, a local base as well in Apulia, uh, in uh, Naples, Amalfi Coast, Sardinia and Sicily that always give us both an operational and creative hand uh, to all the programs. Um, what we like to do is, um, what, what we do is we work on a tailor-made basis. So everything that we do is completely tailored on the requests that we receive. We are always happy to brainstorm with our clients to kind of figure out, you know, the best destination that works for a particular client, a particular project, just because as Norma was saying, Italy is such a vast country that offers different regions and different possibilities, also in terms of budget, that of course is always, is always very important. Um, we are a team of multilingual staff. We all have uh, different backgrounds, but of course we share the love of, for Italy, obviously, and uh, we always try to put a little bit of freshness and an extra touch to the programs that we put together. Recently, in these weird times that we have been living, we have um, especially put uh, a lot of effort apart from, uh, you know, the, the, the post-pandemic, uh, let's say, uh, measures that we will implement in the upcoming groups, um, also on the development of green programs, just because we feel that even more now, it will be such a, a key factor in the decision-making process of the destination and of the event. So that's, that's something that we're really proud of and we will be sharing with you guys even more in the next month. 
But let's start with um, what we are all here for. So Apulia, we thought we would create a little identity kit of you know the what we think is the perfect um, fit in terms of traveler for for Apulia. Um, so as you know, of course, uh, Italy is in the shape of a boot, and uh, Apulia is uh, the the heel of the boot. Uh, so it's located in the in the southeast corner of the country. Um, it was one of the first regions in Italy to kind of um, implement uh, and really uh, put forward the use of its strong renewable energy, so sun and wind, uh, to fulfill the local demand. So all the partners uh, that we use, the hotels and venues, they have really strong uh, um, renewable energy facilities and a lot of solutions for water and energy, energy saving. So great uh, to in incorporate a green element in the program. Not only that, uh, um, great focus is also about the food, obviously. The food in Apulia is, come, comes from like a, a poor tradition. So um, Apulians managed to create award-winning cuisine starting from very simple ingredients um, like flour and water, creating orecchiette pasta, creating focaccia or creating burrata cheese, just to name, uh, just to name a few. So this is, uh, this is something uh, a little bit different maybe from other regions when you have really rich cuisine here, it really, it's really coming from, uh, from the land, from its poor origins um, and, uh, um, and the strong agricultural uh, traditions that they have. Um, thanks to its location, um, Apulia is sort of a crossroad between the land and the sea which means that you know, we can create really diverse programs that incorporate something on the coast, um, the beach, um, but also the inland, the countryside, but also culture, strong culture, strong folkloristic and um, um, new, typical music, dances, um, and um, handcrafts but also architecture. Um, because as you can see in this picture, one of the typical buildings is what you see here, these conical shaped um, houses that are called trulli, um, that you can only find in, uh, in these regions. So they used to be um, agricultural uh, buildings that used either to store um, what was um, harvest, uh, harvested in the fields or also as accommodation for the people that work. Um, in the fields. Um, not only this, but also Masteria that we will see in detail later that also have agricultural backgrounds, most of them dating back from the 16th century, that are fortified farmhouses. Um, what we recommend uh, as a period of travel to Apulia is between March and November. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that Apulia is also a very strong destination for leisure and wedding business, which means that you know between mid-June until mid-September, uh, it's also high season for this type of travelers. But at the beginning and at the end of the season, so let's say March, April, and then uh, end of September, October, and so on. There are really great deals in terms of budget, but also great chances to have um, hotels or masterias that have been turned into hotels on exclusive use for the group, which is always like a nice uh, um, incentive plus. Um, what we normally recommend to our uh, clients is to accommodate in Itria Valley. Itria Valley is, uh, um, is, uh, uh, is highlighted in red in this map. And as you can see, it's sort of in, in between uh, the two um, international airports serving the regions that are Brindisi and Bari airports that are both located about um, an hour um, by coach. Um, why we recommend this location? Because um, it would save lots of like transfer time. The, the main sites that we will see in details later in the program like Alberobello, Polignano, Monopoli and Ostuni are all located like a maximum of 30 minutes drive from this area 
and instead other interesting parts like Matera and Lecce, they are about an hour, an hour and a half drive, but they're totally worth it. So this is a good compromise in terms of location. What we also recommend to do, to do uh, for Puglia is to stay away from the bigger cities and instead move to the real heart of the region, um, which also works great for the, you know, the new measures of social distances that we may need to implement during the, the next project. Um, we, I'm just quickly going through this sample day-by-day -day program that we created. Here you can see a four days, a three nights program, but you know, it can easily be adapted to like a three days, a two night program, depending on flights, budgets, client preferences and so on. So on day one, after our live arrival at the airport, we will start straight away with our vintage car tour self-drive that will take us towards um, the, the heart of the region, towards the, our hotel, but also, you know, uh, but also our first stop in Martina Franca for, um, for a coffee stop, and then our surprise lunch in Albero Bello that is always very excited to present because uh, you will see later why. Um, in the afternoon, our, uh, our local friend from Albero Bello, Albero Bello will take us around the, the town for a walk, and then with the, uh, we will take our cars again to drive to the hotel for the check-in, um, the, the guests will have the possibility to enjoy the hotel facilities and then get ready for the night that will be spent directly at the beach. Um, the second day, we will take our bikes and we will head towards, uh, directly from the hotel, and we will head towards Monopoly Harbor. Here we will have our customer already waiting for us. We will spend a few hours sailing towards Polignano, um, relaxing, uh, sunbathing, uh, dipping in the clear water, um, and we will have an, an, a family-style lunch on board as well. In the afternoon, we will head back to Monopoly, um, which is this fishes village, and we will have a walk around, uh, possibility for gelato, of course, and then get ready to uh, get back to the hotel, to then have dinner in another nearby uh, town that is Ostuni. Day three will all be dedicated to Matera. Matera is not um, in Puglia, but is in a neighboring uh, region called Basilicata. And um, it, it's been 2019 uh, capital of culture, and it's something absolutely unmissable when uh, in this region. Um, in the afternoon, we will return back to the hotel to get ready for the night. There will be Festa del Borgo, which is a typical um, Apulian town festival. So we will reproduce what used to happen in the Masteria centuries ago. With, so it will be like a very lively evening with live food station, live music, live dancing. So something to stay away a little bit from the typical DJ set night. Um, day four, instead, if I can say that, it will be a little bit more cultural because we will head to Lecce, that is the, the Baroque capital of the region, so something completely different from what we had seen the previous days. Um, we will have the possibility to enter like a private um, palace and meet the, um, the, the owner, and then finishing off with a farewell lunch in time to um, reach the airport. We put together, first of all, uh, three examples of hotels that could work well for, um, for groups. The first one is Borgognazia that you may know already because it's, it's probably the, one of the most famous and largest um, hotels of the, of the region. It's also a leading hotel of the world. It's a magnificent, magnificent five stars um, hotel that used to be a masseria, so a fortified farmhouse that has been renewed to highest, to super high standards, of course. Um, and they offer different types of accommodation, including private villas with private pools, um, different food outlets, different restaurants, different types of venues also to arrange um, private um, events there and also like a rich event uh, schedule that is shared also with other guests. The second example is Tenuta Monacelle, five stars property. Here, the interesting thing is that you can um, experience uh, how it is uh, to sleep in one of the trulli that you can see pictured um, here. So uh, this, uh, first of all, used to be a village. Um, then in the 18th century, it was turned into a convent. So, you know, people, you know, the nuns uh, used to live here and work here. 
and now but it, it kind of kept uh, his, uh, his quaint uh, um, atmosphere so a very cozy and unusual an unusual experience experience in terms of accommodation the third example is Masteria al Melograno that is another Masteria um, closer to the sea um, that uh, is famous because it was the first Masteria to open its doors uh, and it's about 400 years old so a great mix of style uh, totally surrounded by nature but again very um, quaint uh, and uh, relaxing in general. So going back to um, the program in greater detail. So as we said, um, after our arrival at the airport, we will have um, the vintage cars already lined up in the airport parking. We have the possibility to brand this parking. So with company flags or, or with company colors, um, we, our um, car experts will give us a few words of introduction and then we will start our self-drive tour towards the heart of the region and towards Alberobello. Most of the car takes um, take two people and the drive is normally two to three hours depending on traffic depending on the exact routine that we will be taking the first stop is in lovely martina franca that is a, um, a town that happens to be on the way to alberobello and here we will stop for a much deserved uh, espresso coffee and pasticciotto which is this um, pastry that is filled with custard cream that is exactly what you need to fuel up after a flight and a few uh, and some time driving we will then go back to our car and cars and then arrive to alberobello here is the first surprise of the day because we will have um, a lunch already set up and ready for us uh, set up in a, in a private street among the trulli so our local cook um, will cook directly from one of these truly and we will be able to enjoy lunch basically at their doorsteps. So a really unique experience that I think you cannot really experience in, uh, in, in, other, in other places and will, will allow you to really feel the essence of this place. So this is a little bit how Albero Bello looks uh, because after lunch we will have the possibility with a local friend to um, find out what these truly are, why Alberobello was declared UNESCO Heritage War um, uh, site. Um, it's, it's really a, queer, a quirky place and an unmissable stop while, uh, while in the area. We will then uh, take again our cars or otherwise we can also arrange a coach transfer to the hotel for the check-in. Uh, guests will be able to enjoy the hotel facilities or you know, to get ready for the night that um, will be spent uh, um, directly on the coast. We thought of this venue, um, San Domenico Amare, that works perfectly for um, a white night because of its colors. And it will be a super chilled um, evening after a day busy exploring. We will have aperitivo directly on the sea and then we will move to the, to the terrace for a, a, for a fish dinner um, with the local uh, catch of the day. Um, here we can also arrange uh, um, entertainment. Normally we recommend something light that is more in line with this, with this type of venue. So like a chilled, uh, refreshing night uh, uh, overlooking the Adriatic Sea. The second day, um, we will take our bikes directly from the hotel after breakfast and uh, we will cycle towards uh, Monopoly Harbor. Um, we will cycle in, in the stretch between uh, um, the, the coast and the inland. We will pass through um, century-old olive trees. We will see farmers working in the, in the fields. We will see ruins. Um, we will see truly, we will see meals. Our guides uh, will be able to point out uh, all uh, um, everything that uh, that we see. The, the cycling path takes about an hour, depending on the hotel um, on the hotel selected, and uh, will take us directly to the harbor, where our catamaran will be ready will be ready for us. Uh, we will set sail towards uh, Polignano Mare, that is famous for the Red Bull um, cliff diving competition that takes place every year. 
um, here is the time to uh, either do some sports because we will be able to, uh, to do some water sports, uh, canoeing, kayaking, snorkeling, uh, but also to chill for those who simply want to sunbathe and have a dip in the, in the water. We will also have uh, a family style lunch directly on board. So in general, about three to four hours of sailing, then of course, always depending on, on the client's uh, preferences. But truly, so we will see Puglia from a different perspective. So rather than from the land, we will see it from the sea. In the afternoon, going back to, to Monopoly, we will explore a little bit further this fisher's village that apart from this lovely harbor, um, also has a lot of like narrow streets, all in this whitewashed stone that you see pictured here. Um, we will have a gelato stop, obviously, and then um, just, you know, take some time to, um, for the guests maybe to, to, to buy some souvenirs or um, just to, to have some free time. We will then head back to the hotel by coach, it's only about 15 minutes um, in time to get ready for dinner that instead will take place in Ostuni, that is um, another nearby um, town in this particular uh, restaurant that, um, is, uh, that, that is developed under these stone bowls that you see pictured here. And the specialty here is that they only cook dishes uh, from the 15th century, meaning that th those are dishes that are no longer in, um, cooked by you know, the population or by other restaurants. And those are unique from, from this particular restaurant, something that you wouldn't be able to experience anywhere else. The third day, as discussed, will be all about Matera. And let me focus a little bit on this picture because this is, of course, a picture and some may think that it's retouched, but you know, this is exactly what it looks like. Um, Matera is, we found that it's something that, that is a city that is not necessarily known to many. Lots of people haven't been there. Of course, it got more famous as of last year because it was the capital of culture, but it's a city that is totally carved in tough stone, as you can see from this picture, and it rises on the um, on the Gravina River uh, Canyon. Um, it's also called the subterranean city and it's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, here um, the, it's about an hour and a half drive from the Hotel Dimitria Valley but I guarantee you that the trip is totally worth it. Um, here we could think of having like a, a, a more cultural tour in a way so visiting one of the Sassi Sassi means uh, stone in um, in Italian, so like the the one that you see in the um, in the in the picture below, or otherwise uh, we we could add a little bit more of adrenaline using the Ape Calestino that you see pictured here. That is this three wheeled tuk tuk because you you may wish to know that Matera is all up and down, so you may want to save a little bit of the sweat <laughs> and keep the energy for the rest of uh, for the rest of the day. So again, this experience can, you know, in terms of duration can be tailored a little bit um, according to, you know, the type of, uh, of group that we are dealing with, but I would say starting from one hour. Or otherwise, it could be tailored also in a more gourmet way. Um, so here we have our lovely friends, Lucia and Ada, that are sisters, and they, they are the fourth generation of bakers um, in Matera. Um, the, the Matera bread loaf is, uh, is, is such an important feature of the history of this, uh, of this city because it used to be one of the main sources of nutrition back in the days where, you know, it was a particularly poor um, situation and area. Um, so, and additionally, it was also like a, a real family ritual. So, you know, people, families would come together just to prepare uh, you know, this, uh, this bread. So it has lots of, you know, feelings attached to that. And of course, being a family business for, you know, for generations now, they would have lots to share to the guests. So of course, this can also be paired, you know, the tasting can also be paired with olive oil, for instance, but um, it's, um, it's, all, it's for smaller groups, just because of the size of the, of the shop. But of course, you know, in case of larger groups, they can always alternate um, and rotate. Lunch will take place in one of the mesmer mesmerizing terraces of, uh, of Matera. Here in particular, we are, in particular, we are looking at the Mora Ulmo um, that has a totally low-key entrance through one of the stones. 
And once you enter the courtyard, you don't expect that there is an actual noble palace there. And least of all, you expect that behind the noble palace, you have this terrace overlooking the canyon, overlooking the Sassi. So it's, it's something you know, of another, of another world. And the, the interesting thing is that uh, this particular restaurant has managed to um, recreate a cuisine that uh, really starts from like the poor origin of this region, but in a gourmet, uh, gourmet uh, version. And it's located directly in the city center of, um, of Matera. In the afternoon, after a little bit of roaming in the town, we will head back to the hotel to get ready for, you know, our super farewell night. Um, as we said earlier, Festa del Borgo is, uh, um, takes its uh, origins from uh, the Apulian town festival that, were, that would rotate around the Masteria. Um, and its courtyard. So lots of the economical um, activities that took place around this area and it was a way to kind of keep the community together and cook, um, cook together, spend time together, dance together and so on. So we would recreate exactly that. In the courtyard of the Masteria we would have uh, live food station so we would have a lady that is making our orecchiette fresh pasta from scratch and cooking it in front of us we would have the cheese maker that is preparing the mozzarella uh, right in front of our eyes and giving it directly to the guests uh, while it's still warm we would have live barbecue station we would have like um, fried veggie station so you know the guests will be able to wander around the courtyard and kind of um, taste as many delicacies that they that they want all very informal but also it's a great possibility to kind of mingle with the people that work there and also with the colleagues of course as well as traditional entertainment so as we said before um apulia is really strong in, in folklore so we have tarantella music we have pizzica dancing we have weaving we have street artists so it will be a very lively night uh, where I guarantee you that even the shyest of the guests at the end of the night will be dancing, you know, in group with uh, with the colleagues and hopefully we'll leave everyone with a long-lasting uh, impression of Apulia. The fourth day instead will be um, dedicated to Lecce. Uh, as I said earlier, Lecce is the, the Baroque capital of the region. So as you can see from this picture, it's completely different from uh, the type of style that we've seen uh, during the previous days. So very rich uh, in a way. And uh, the highlight of the day will be the possibility to, um, to visit uh, uh, a private noble palace that is still used by the owner. And uh, the owner will greet us and at the end uh, um, we will have uh, a little toast uh, all together to kind of bid farewell to, to Apulia. The final lunch will be um, again a uh, farmer's sort of lunch, uh, so lots of meat, lots of uh, ham, cheese, salami, all uh, typical from, uh, the, from Lecce. So this is um, it in terms of program because after this we will head to the airport in time for, um, for the flight. But we thought we would leave you also with some um, ideas in terms of food because um, one of the peculiarity of Puglia is also the rich um, tradition of handcrafts, particularly of terracotta. So what you see pictured in this, um, in this slide are whistles that are typical of the region and can be hand painted with company uh, colors or with company logos or, or slogan. But also we can think of hand painted terracotta orci that are the um, olive oil uh, bottles in terracotta or otherwise all the food that you can think of that can fit also different types of budget. For instance, olive oil, of course, produced in the area, taralli that you see pictured here that are these dry bread uh, parcels, but also Primitivo di Manduria wine, sauces, uh, um, pasta, all these types of things. And to finish off, 
we thought we would leave a little bit of a homework to do <laughs> because even though now you know the lockdown restrictions have been eased pretty much everywhere in case you find yourself with a little bit of <laughs> spare time and maybe you can start uh, savoring for yourself a little bit of the of the flavors of this uh, of this region so here is a super simple super low cost and super tasty uh, recipe of orecchiette pasta with turnip tops so we would like to see you at it and i think this is it for from my side um i hope um i gave you a little bit of a of an overview of the region um and uh, now if there are any questions i would be more than happy to answer them and but of course you're also more than welcome to draw me a line you have my email address in the in the in the email that you received after the, the registration to the webinar and we will of course be sending you these slides uh, together with the covid um, document that we that we created especially so let's see if we have questions and Norman is back as well yes, thank you back. Elisa thank you so much for your ah, you're more than welcome <laughs> <laughs> a lot of new experiences or ideas about this special destination okay that's great to hear thank you appreciate it yeah cool I, lo I love your presentation it's really beautiful lots of nice pictures as well <laughs> yes, to hopefully give a little bit of inspiration now in this weird time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Even though I know the destination a bit, but uh, there were quite, a, quite a, some nice uh, ideas uh, which uh, could yeah. enhance the program there. I think that, you know, this program covers um, quite a lot of the, of the highlights of the region and is a good compromise between all factors. So even like four days, that could be very well kind of covered and you know people wouldn't get bored then of course everything is totally customizable and uh, subject to, to to your preferences obviously yeah hello everybody i wanted to quickly say hi hi carol, hi, carol. Hi. nice to see you hi <laughs> i had a bit of problem with the check-in <laughs> <laughs> so i was late italy <laughs> what can i say <laughs> Italy was super, were super on time this time yeah. round. <laughs> we can confirm. <laughs> great, great, great. Good to see you all here, or hear you at least. So, um, thank you very much, Elisa, for the presentation. I have a question, and I'm not quite sure if you answered already or you mentioned it at the beginning. Obviously, flights are an issue nowadays anyway. But tell me, how were they in the past? Because you need to fly to Bari, isn't it? Well, you have two possibilities. Yeah, Bari, uh, it's either Bari or Brindisi Airport. Bari is a larger one. Um, so, you know, it's, there are better chances to have flights there. I know for sure from Frankfurt, there are connections. Now, you know, I, I've done a quick research, uh, you know, to try and give you updated information, but you know, this is not really the best <laughs> moment to do research in that sense, because, you know, we will see what's gonna happen in, uh, in, uh, in the next month. Um, it's true that um, there are different carriers operating from, uh, from those uh, airports. So even low cost ones, uh, in case, you know, the group is, uh, is willing to travel with low cost carriers. Um, and uh, most of them, uh, they tend to be, because Puglia is it's quite a seasonal destination. So most of the, of the flights will operate between, uh, let's say Easter time or end of March, something like that till uh, late October, early November something like that okay so it's a seasonal destination anyway yeah I mean for the program that we promote and because we want to um, we want guests to experience you know the heart of the region we want to experience a little bit of the sea and all that uh, you know it, it's an extended uh, season because you know from March till November is, is not is not bad uh, but you know still those would be the best times I think do the hotels close in winter time? Like the uh, Borg Nat, for example, do they close down? It depends. Uh, some some of them maybe they they close for like a month, like maybe I don't know in February or end of November uh, until mid December. Then they reopen for Christmas time and New Year's. Uh, 
um, in general, most of them are open from March till November, and then they may have those, those breaks uh, just before and after the festivities. Mm. But this is what concerns uh, uh, the, the seaside or the countryside properties. Then, of course, in the cities, it, it's a different matter. Mm. Yeah. But for, for winter, we have other possibilities eh, in Italy, you know. <laughs> we are not lacking anything. Yeah. <laughs> Go skiing. <laughs> yeah. Um, you said you sent the presentation anyway to everybody yeah. who uh, was. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I will send you the um, I will send you the presentation so you can keep it for your perusal in case you ever need a little bit of inspiration. And of course, if you have any doubts, you're more than happy to to get in contact with me. Cool. Great. Right. Good. Sounds good. So th thank you very much for this really great presentation. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot for joining. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much again. Really thank great. you all. <laughs> Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.